He shouted me out the other day yeah. and was saying like, oh, Joe's always this like, you know, positive guy. He's always making other people feel good. And then he, at the end, he was like, oh, like, I'm not Joe. I don't know why he does this. And he was like, maybe he's got issues. <laughs> people might have been like, what? Like, yeah, why is yeah. Jason saying that about mm. Joe? But he kind of like hit it spot wow. on. It's a depressing story, mm. but it's something that's positive. And that's why... I am the way I am. So it was probably two weeks into my freshman year of college, so not even like, I, I was barely acclimated. And my dad passed away. Yeah, my dad so, passed so, away. So sorry. No, I mean, yeah. it, this is, it's who I am. So I don't mind talking about it and it's why I am the way I am. But yeah, he, he passed away in like a horrible way. He died of suicide. Oh my God. Yeah, he was, he was a war veteran. Uh, he was in the Vietnam War. So he had PTSD and depression, just like a ton of demons. He was an alcoholic. And my parents split up when I was six years old, but for the better, like they made it work after that. They were like best friends still, which was nice. He was, you know, over our house all the time. He'd do our lawn. Like he was over all yeah, the holiday. Yeah, he he lived the town over, yeah. so he was, over at like every other day, yep. but he was still around all the time. But when he did pass away, I took so much blame and it's horrible. Like obviously it wasn't my fault and I know that now, but it's easier said than done. Like when it ha something happens like that and someone's such like a, a big part of your life, you, you start to question like, could I have done anything yeah. differently? So I had that like running through my head for years. Like, and it was just so bad. And I was just in like a horrible place. I was still me, I was still the like oh, happy Joe, yeah, yeah. but just a horrible place in my life. And I realized, and this is what I'm bringing it back to. I realized the only thing that would make me like feel better was making other people happy. Okay, usually we get the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to episode number 66, 66. of the Conscious Cast. I'm your host, Cal, along with my other boy, Mr. Joe Iacovelli. How are we doing, Mr. Joe? Doing doing good, doing <laughs> no well. No complaints. Looking as handsome as ever. <laughs> uh not not today. Not not yeah, not usually, but yeah. it's early. Yeah, it's early. Not even, but I feel like I just woke up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um but yeah, yeah how man, are you doing? No, I'm doing well, man. Like you said, Good. it's a, it's a beautiful day outside. It's starting yeah. to get a little colder in Connecticut, so like I'm yeah. not I'm not I'm not sure how I'm feeling about it. But you know, we're we're moving, we're moving. I like it. But yeah, for those who do not know, Joe mm -hmm. is a yoga instructor by day, mm -hmm. <laughs> RA by midday, mm -hmm. and then nurse by night. Yep. And so yeah, he's uh he goes to Central Connecticut State University here with me. Um, and uh, we've known each other for probably like what two years now. Probably two years, two but years. just this past year, we've gotten yeah, a exactly. lot closer. A lot closer, yeah. yeah. Like, and um, I've like every guest that I have on this podcast, like mm -hmm. I really, like I really feel like you're a very high value mm -hmm. individual, right? In terms okay. of like just the characteristics you have about yourself, mm -hmm. you know. I'm um, not trying to like put you up on a pedestal. Say you're like you know the su superior mm -hmm. god, even though yeah. I think you are. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just like you're just an individual that I think others look to as a beacon of light and mm -hmm. as like a role model. So I thought you would be a great guest to have on mm -hmm. today, and you could share your perspectives yeah. about your life experience, and you know just give um, other opinions about you know yeah. wherever this wherever our conversation yeah. goes. But yeah. um, I think you just going off that real yeah, quick. Yeah. Um, I think people do get that like misconstrued mm. where they're like, oh, like. A lot of people like him. He's this God. He's yeah, this other yeah, figure. Yeah. But like, it's not like, I think what you said, like beacon of light yeah. or like something uh -huh. that people could look to for positivity yeah, definitely, is definitely. something that like yeah. is a lot. I'm like, I'm not anything special. <laughs> yes. You know, I just try to spread, spread yeah, some positivity. Exactly. Like, it's yeah. not like, um, um, I don't have these special power. Like anyone could do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I agree. Um, man. I agree. So I think I like the way you yeah, put that. And I think too, it's like, and maybe maybe you can feel this way as well too. When I, like whenever I'm whenever I'm uh, around like a lot of people because I I very much get the same type of messages you do. Yeah, you know yeah, um, exactly. Just yeah. you're so goddamn handsome. It's like <laughs> you. Not me, no, I'm sorry. No, but, um, <laughs> no. So pretty much, um, what people will do a lot of times is like when I, when I like deviate from yep. that kind of like normal positive uh, outlook, which is like, which is fine. You know, mm -hmm. like I'm just saying, maybe I say something that's not as positive or I swear or something else. They're like, Oh my God, Cal, mm -hmm. what are you like? You don't swear. You're, you're God's <laughs> child. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's like, have you ever felt that? Like, have you yeah. ever felt like you've been put in a box, right? Mm -hmm. And like, you can't deviate from that box. Like you can't be yourself, right? Cause mm -hmm. like people expect you to be this like, Oh my God, go to bed at four in the morning or yeah. go to bed at, eight wake up at four you know just be always on their shit yeah. and it's just like you're human too you know it's yeah. I, do, you, do you ever feel that i that like perfectly <laughs> and i feel like no one ever 
understands that. Mm. So I'm glad you yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I know you feel the same way and people yeah. do the same to you, but mm. you're right. Sometimes yeah. you just can't be yourself totally. Mm. Um, Stuff. And I, but I get it. Like yeah, if yeah. I'm always this like positive, happy guy, yeah, yeah. no one really sees me like yeah. too, you know, upset or like, you know, frazzled or anything. Yeah. Um, I get why like the one day I am, you know, just feeling a little down or something or not that same, same way. I get why they're like, oh, like what, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of the reaction I get. Whereas like, if someone else was down, maybe no one would really question it or they'd be like, oh, they're just having a bad day. But like when I, like sometimes I feel like I can't have an off day, yeah. you know, I feel like if I'm down, people are like, it, it's not like always oh, just having a bad day. They're like, what the hell's wrong with you? Yeah, like what's, yeah. what's gotten into you? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, it's just a, you know, it's yeah, not, it's, it's not a good day. It's not, you know, it's almost as though you're not allowed to have a bad yeah. day. And yeah. it's like, that is, I just thought about that. I'm mm -hmm. like, to me, that is like such a weird that's so mm -hmm. weird, you know, because mm -hmm. it's like, it's almost as though people that are on the flip side of that are always having a bad day, right? Mm -hmm. They don't allow themselves to have a good day. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm like, yeah. don't get me wrong. I would much rather be on the other end mm -hmm. of the spectrum. But like, I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie. Oh God. It was like about this girl and then like inside her head, like they had like, the movie was pretty much just about the emotions in the girl's head. Like it was a movie in San Francisco. I forget. You probably know exactly what I'm talking like about. Like a cartoon. Yeah, it was like a cartoon. Inside movie. Out. Yeah, Inside it? Out. Yeah, yes, I yes. love that. And movie. like pretty much the the whole mm. conclusion of that movie was it's I'm like I forget exactly what was happening because like the happy emotion was always trying to make the sad mm -hmm. emotion feel better, mm -hmm. but the the girl didn't end up feeling better until she went through sadness when she experienced sadness. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of the times, like especially with people like us, yep. you know, people people are like. They, they expect us to always be happy, you know, and mm -hmm. they don't allow us to be sad, exactly. you know, and it's yeah. like, you got to experience all the emotions, you yeah. know, and I don't know, because like, I, like, what, what, what made you get into like, just having such a predominantly positive mm -hmm. mindset, you know, and it's yeah. like, and in addition to that, like, when you do feel like down, mm -hmm. what are like, what are some ways you combat that? I know it's a very broad question. No, no, but like, it's, yeah. it's a perfect question. And I think when Jay, shout out Jason, Jason. 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 <laughs> shout out Jason, when he shouted me out the other day yeah. um, and was saying like, oh, Joe's always this like, um, you know, positive guy. He's always making other people feel good. Um, and then he, he kind of, at the end, he was like, oh, like, I'm not Joe. I don't know why he does this. And he was like, maybe he's got issues maybe <laughs> and people might have been like what like yeah, why is yeah. jason saying that about joe mm. but he kind of like hit it spot wow, on no kidding Damn. yeah because like the thing is you never know like why other people are a way they are yeah. right um so i think he hit the nail on the head wow. with that Damn. um crazy. yeah it's like a it's a depressing story mm. but it don't feel yeah, if you no, want i if will you, oh, I, yeah yeah, if you yeah want i don't it, mind i I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like talking about it um yeah, gotcha gotcha i think it's something that's positive, you know? And that's why I am the way I am. Yeah. Gotcha, you know, gotcha, yeah. that's why I am the way I am. Um, but he kind of hit the nail on the head. Wow. Um, so it was probably two weeks into my freshman year of college. So not even like I, I was barely acclimated. Um, and my dad passed away. Oh my yeah. My dad so, passed so, away. So sorry. No, I mean, yeah. it, this is, it's who I am, you yeah, know? Yeah. So I don't mind talking about it and it's why I am the way I am. Um, but yeah, he, he passed away in like a horrible way. He died of suicide. Oh my God. Yeah. He was, what? he was a war veteran. Uh, wow. he was in the Vietnam war. Wow. Um, so he had PTSD and depression. Um, just like a ton of demons, you know, yeah. um, he was an alcoholic and my parents split up when I was six years old. Um, but for the better, like they made it work after yeah. that. Like they split up and like it, we, they always joked because like people didn't even know they split up because like at, you know, at like a sports game or something like the divorced parents like can't even sit <laughs> yeah, near each yeah, other. Yeah. They were like best friends still, oh, um, okay. which was nice. He was, you know, over our house all the time. Yeah. He'd do our lawn like he was over yeah, all the holiday. Yeah, he no, he, he lived the town involved, over. Yeah. So he was over at like every other day. Yep. Um, but they just didn't work as a couple and that was okay because gotcha, gotcha. he had his problems. Yeah, he was an alcoholic. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. um, so, so that, that I, I say that only because, um, his death impacted me so much. Some people are like, Oh, like they were divorced so that you weren't really close with him, but he was still around all the time, you know? Um, but when he did pass away, I took so much blame 
Um, and it's horrible. Like, obviously, it, it wasn't my fault, you know, and I know that now. But it's easier said than done. Like, when it ha- something happens like that and someone's such, like, a, a big part of your life, you you start to question, like, could I have done anything yeah. differently? Um, so I had that, like, running through my head for years. Like, and it was just so bad. Um, and I was just in, like, a horrible place. Um, I was still me. I was still the, like, oh, happy course, Joe. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Um, but just a horrible place in my life. Um, and I realized, and this is what I'm bringing it back to, I realized the only thing that would make me, like, feel better was making other people happy. And I think, like Jason said, I have issues from that where I I didn't do that as much with my dad that I think I should have. Um, like, say he'd call and I wouldn't be that receptive or gotcha. um, I didn't call him as much. You know, just stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. You, yeah, yeah. Hindsight's twenty yeah, twenty. So exactly. I'm saying, like, exactly. I could have done this and this and this. Mm-hmm. When in reality, I probably could have done nothing, you know. He yeah. had his mindset. Mm-hmm. Um, but you, you start to think about all those things. Yeah. Um, so I think that's why I started, like, I would realize when I would check up on, like, a friend that I haven't talked to in a while, I'd be like, oh, how are you doing? How is... Or if someone just moved away, I'd be like, oh, how's, you know, your new spot? Or um, someone got a new job, you know, congratulate them. It's just, like, little things like that I think it started off as. Um, so it's almost selfish. And not in a way that, like, I'm doing it to make other people happy, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it it's, like, 50% selfish because it makes me feel as good as it does the person that I'm... Gosh, gosh. That I'm... Whether it's complimenting or, like, lifting up. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Jason would kind of hit the nail on the head, wow, which is right. Um, but that's who I am today. Like, and I'm, yeah. I'm thankful. Sounds stupid because I'm not. Obviously, I'd want my dad to be alive. Yeah, of course. Of course but yeah. so much good has come out of it. Like, I wouldn't be the person I am today. Yeah. Um, and I believe that. I believe wow. everything happens for a reason. We've yeah. talked about that yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yep. Um, so me and my family are, a bit, like, really receptive to that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. We just, yeah. Everything happens yeah. for a reason. Man, not that, to get all depressed. Dude, what are we, no, like, no, no, three no, 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 dude, in, no, dude, no, 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 I love depressing. that, bro. And like the fact yeah. that you're willing to share that, yeah. And bro, you've no idea how many people that can help, you know, yeah. and, it, and will help, you yeah. know. And it's like just being able to take some, dude. When I tell like something like that, mm-hmm. like that is that is beyond measure yeah. when it comes to like like I've never personally experienced anything like that in my life, and nor have like ninety nine percent of kids our age, you know. And the fact that you're able to take almost all of it, right? Not all of it. I should say a majority yeah. of it as like a positive lesson that can help guide your entire life, right? And how you act towards others is amazing, bro. So, and it's like, and I, I, I respect you so much for being able to like being able to recognize that, right? And like get out of that state of like, you know, how you said you felt like you blamed yourself, yeah. right? You felt like it was partially your fault, right? Mm-hmm. Partially, Definitely. yeah, partially That's your I, fault. For, for a while, yeah. yeah. And so like, Correct me if I'm wrong. The reason why you're acting like this way or, or is is the reason why you're trying to lift others up in order to kind of like, in a way, help like that or maybe like kind of like diminish, not necessarily the yeah. blame, but like. Yeah, a hundred percent. Because when I exactly you hit okay. the nail on the head, like if I know that I'm like lifting other people up, it's like, OK, I'm not going to make that same mistake I made yeah. with my dad. Mm. And again, I know like it's not my fault, you know, and therapists were like, you can't say that, like it's not your fault, but like (laughs) it's hard to not think that when like, um, like he would come to all my games. Like I had, he was, I was a big part of his life, like his whole life. Um, so when I, you know, went to college, he didn't really have that anymore and I'm not calling him all the time and stuff, you know? So I was like, you know, it's my fault. Mm. And that's what I thought for so long. Um, but you're totally right. Like Mm. I... By, like, lifting other people up, it's kind of like, okay, I'm not going to make that same mistake again. Yeah. And it's yeah. subcon- like, I'm not mm. thinking that when I'm of doing course, these course, things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I'm not like, oh, my God, I'm afraid this person's going to harm themselves, so yeah. I need to lift yeah. them up. Or, mm-hmm. oh, my God, I don't want yeah. this person yeah. to feel, definitely, definitely. you know, it's just yeah, kind yeah, of, yeah. Um, it makes me feel good. It makes yeah, the other person feel good. Yeah. Um, so it kind of stems all from that. Yeah. And, um, yeah. yeah. No, so I mean, I just, I find that fascinating, man. And it's. Because, like, obviously, you're not, like, every time you go and say something positive to someone, you're not, like, this is, you know, like like, like you said. Um, but I think, like I was saying before, like, how you're able to take that lesson and let it guide your life in such a way that is, like, so impactful to so many people. Because, like, bro, every single time I'm around, like, 
like just people in general, every, everyone's just like, man, yo, Joe, <laughs> you know, it's just like, everyone's like, just so happy. Mm. Like, and just your, just your presence alone, dude, lifts people's moods up. Right. And yeah. I think just, oh man, it's, it's like the, it's like the worst things that happen to people can also be the best things too, you know? Definitely. And it's like taking a situation like that and just letting it, um, guide your life in such a way that you're allowed that you help others like in in such a great way is a great thing man yeah. and i mean honestly too like you know i've actually never brought this up on the podcast and, and jay knows about it jay i and this is not to compare this yeah. is not to but i no, think yeah. i think to reflect in my own life and like i i don't even i'm so desensitized to it but very mm -hmm. similar to you like i haven't seen my dad in like 10 years dude and yeah. um yeah like at a very young age my parents got divorced you know um and he's probably he might be watching this right now. I'm pretty sure he has a YouTube or he like he, he uh has like he's aware of my channel, I should say. Um and like yeah, very similar to you. He was a drug addict. He was um uh whatchamacallit? Alcoholic, you know, very similar like I'm going through a lot of personal issues, you know. Um and when I was yeah, like I think like the, we, we we why we're so similar, you know, it's like you don't drink, you don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't smoke, right? Yeah. Is primarily because of that reason right and i think like because i'm just so desensitized to that issue but I, I never really look at how him not being in my life has affected me you know and i bet in more ways than not it it affects it me tremendously and may, i think i have to dive more within myself and really look at that and i think just being able to like, like, I, like I've said this so many times, being able to like take that type of situation, right? Mm -hmm. And him, you know, leaving my life 10 years ago, right? Growing up without a father figure, you know, it, and on paper, that seems like, oh, that kid's going to be awful. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. But like, I feel like I've turned out to be one of the best versions of myself and vice versa. Yeah, you know what I mean? Definitely. And so, I mean, just kind of like relating it back to you. It's when, when your dad uh, passed away, mm -hmm. how, how do you feel like, I, was there this like shift in awareness where you just became so much more not cognizant of the fact but like you intentionally tried to start like acting a certain way mm -hmm. like towards people like did it was it okay I should say was it like a really big awakening moment for you like after like looking back on it I would say it was very gradual, very gradual. um because okay. at, at first like when it happened I, I came back to school Cause, I mean, I was a freshman. I was taking 18 credits. Like I was like this ambitious freshman, yeah. um, playing rugby, doing a bunch. Like, you know, we're both yeah, busy yeah. now. Same yeah. back then. Um, but I had to get back to school. So I, I went back to school like a week later, like a week, a week and a half. I didn't take any time off. Like there was thoughts, maybe I should just take the semester off, you know, but I, I pushed through, I, I went back to school. Yeah. Um, maybe it was for the better. Maybe it wasn't. Cause I was probably not ready. I was so just like, just so angry. Like the littlest things would like yeah. set me off. Mm. Um, whether it was with like friends or with um, like Jake, shout out Jake Satilli. Jake Satilli. He <laughs> took a beating that year. Yeah. Just like from me, like emotionally, wow. um, physically, just, I was just so, and he's the best for that. Yeah. You know, he knew I was going through something horrible um, and he looked past you know, how I was acting. Um, I wasn't like this horrible person, but like, you know, I just had a short time. I mean, as a kid, you, you know, we have short yeah, tempers yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. or just ready to yeah. just go crazy anyway. Um, but I feel like I, you know, whether we were playing a basketball game or something, I would just get like so mad so easily. Yeah. Um, I was just messed up, you know, yeah, emotionally. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so at first I wasn't like that, but I think it really stemmed from a few people checking in on me. Um, and I had like those really consistent people that would check up yeah, on yeah. me all the time. Mm. And that meant a lot to me. Mm. Um, and then I kind of just like reciprocated that back. Like if I hadn't seen one of my friends in a while, um, I would text them. Cause I was like, Oh, this feels good when someone else does it yeah, to me. Yeah. Um, mm. so let me, you know, yeah. make someone else's day, yeah, check yeah, up definitely. on someone. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was really gradual. I think yeah, it took me gotcha, like, gotcha. not until like maybe last year, where I finally yeah. like became yeah. who I am. Wow, um, really? Even but I was just so emotionally just wow. messed up for so long. So yeah, you wow, that's fascinating. Because like, 
couple couple things real yeah. quick. You've been so have you had like a predominantly positive mindset like your entire life? Would you say or yeah? Okay, I would okay. say it, yeah. It, okay, yeah, yeah, definitely. So up until like last year, like you've always been a really positive individual, right? That's like just like naturally how you've always yeah. been. Um, but up until last year, you didn't really figure out and who you were. So like what like if you could like. I don't know, brief, not like not briefly, but like just explain like wh- what do you mean by like who like who you are as Joe? Yeah. Like what do what do you mean by that? Yeah. I would say I would say um, so. It was last year, but I think throughout my whole life I've yeah. been um, like you. Like we've been exposed to like some pretty bad things that have made yeah. us mature pretty quickly. Yep, definitely. Um, so you just kind of understand life a little bit mm-hmm. more. And my mom has been like, I mean, she's my best friend. It's awesome, but man. she's That's been. So cool. Um, just incredible, like raising me, yep. um, with my dad. But I mean, um, like, like you were saying before, like, I feel like my dad raised me, you know, taught me a lot of valuable lessons, but also taught me what not to do. And I think you yes. have the same very, mindset very with that. Great point. Um, but, um, yeah. So my mom always just stressed like a positive mindset, okay. um, looking at, you know, the brighter side of things and. Just about life in general. That life happens. There's yeah, there's good and yeah. bad. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I was always like positive. But last year, I'd say, was the first time where I like made it who I am in a way. Yeah. Um, like before, it would be, you know, my personality and and. But now it's like, it's who I am. I feel yeah. you know. So when you when you ask me that question, like, what does that mean? I feel like it's it transitioned from being a part of my life to maybe like my, my main personality trait or whatever to like, now it's like who I am, you know, now I feel like okay. that more than anything is what I'm here for. You okay. Know? Oh, okay. So it's yeah. like, would you say it's like part of your purpose? Yeah, okay. definitely. It's definitely my purpose. It's yeah. Yeah. And so would you say like, so that the reason why and you can correct me if you're, if I'm wrong, like, the, like the reason why your dad passed away happened for a reason, right? Yeah. Like it happened. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah, that's, um, and I think a lot of people too, like, especially myself, um, have a hard time like struggling with their purpose, you know, like what exactly they're here for, you know? And it's like, I think, yeah, I mean, man, like I, I, I think that's a big big flaw in my life you know it's I, it just not being able to like because that is such a significant part of my own life and yeah. i think i think it does play a huge role in my purpose i'm just not aware of it yeah and you know? i never so, knew that i mean yeah. that that was great that you shared that no, i'm yeah, sorry but that no, i mean no, no, we're sure, very sure. similar yeah, yeah definitely i know where you're coming from no. you know where i'm coming yeah, from definitely um and i never knew that but i could see i could mm. i could see it yeah you know definitely. if someone like it didn't surprise me almost because yeah Cause we're so similar, dude. Yeah, you know? for real. It's kind of, yeah. it's kind of scary. It's scary. <laughs> yeah, but um, and it's I really like how you said that. It, like, once again, it's like you're taking such a, an event like that is objectively like really, really bad. You know what I mean? Yeah, nightmare. But yeah. you're you, yeah, like literally nightmare. Yeah. That's a great way of saying it. Um, and you're using it in such a great way, right? And I think when people can take such drastic events, right? And of course, in the moment, it's going to be like a nightmare, right? Exactly. But if you're able to get out of that nightmare and mm-hmm. get past it and reflect on it and relate it to your own life, which I need to do with, you know, my whole father situation, you yep. know, I'm not saying I'm going to reach out to my dad. Like, I, I'm okay. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, exactly. I don't. Yeah, exactly. Like, we're, we're doing our own thing. Mm-hmm. You know, that's I, I want to keep it that way. Yep. Um, and if you're watching, I hope you're all well and good. You yeah. know, we're just got to stay in our own separate lanes. Yeah. But um, it's just how it is. Um, but um. Well, that felt really weird to say. Um, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> I, right, yeah. I, I got to say, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's part of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But um, if you're able to incorporate that within your purpose, right, like the reason for why you're here, I feel like, do you feel like when you said, like when you realized who you were, did it give you just like, not necessarily like, it just, did it give you more meaning in your life? Mm-hmm. Did it give you more of a drive? Definitely. And before, like, it, it's depressing, but I, I was in just such a horrible spot where I was yeah. like, should I not be here? Yeah. You know? Mm. Cause if, if yep. someone that means so much to you, yeah. um, you know, takes their own life, you're like, what, what's the meaning of mine? You know, what, why am I here? Yeah. And it was really hard. Oh, and I had, man. you know, That's I had true. thoughts and it was, I mean, like a lot of us do that go through horrible things yeah. like that. Um, not that it's normal, but 
it, it is a little bit to just yeah. have those thoughts come into your mind. Of course. Um, so I definitely had thoughts. And then what, you know, I kind of had that awakening where like, now I have a purpose, you know, I'm not here for him anymore. I'm not mm. here for myself. I'm here for other people. Dang. Um, and I think that was awesome. big. And I think the thing that my mom said after it all happened, you know, a few months after she was like, you know, once things calmed down a little bit, she's like, okay, like it happened. Like what now? Like we could either yeah. take this and be sad and cry and yeah. think about, you know, harming ourselves and just yeah. living these horrible mm -hmm. negative lives. Yeah. Or we could flip it into something positive. We could, yeah. you know, go out and volunteer at um, a veterans hospital. We yeah, could go in and, and talk about it. Like we are yeah, right exactly. now. Like that's exactly. part of it. It's yeah. not like, that's why, you know, I like talking about it. And you yeah, said, yeah. um, you were happy I brought it up, but I think that's part of it. You yeah. know, that's mm -hmm. part of it is talking about men's mental health yeah, and mental course, health in general. Course, yeah. Um, cause if I just never talked about it and just kept it under the rug, I mean, it, that could be, that, it could be bad, you know, yeah, I, definitely, it definitely. could be bad for me yeah. to hold it all in, but it could also be if we're helping just one person yeah, talking about exactly. it, that's all that matters. Yeah. But that was the big point was when my mom was mm -hmm. like, it happened, yeah. you know, that's a fact. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing we can do to change <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So what are we going to do? Yeah. You know, we mm -hmm. have to, let's make something good out of it. Yeah. You know? And dude, yeah, it's, it's one of the biggest things that I have learned over these past couple of years. Like you determine the meaning, right? Yeah. Like you give things, right? Cause you give things the, like the meaning they have. Right. Mm -hmm. And so like, like your mom said, right? Like it happened, right? Yeah. It's just how it is. You know, like, of course you take all the emotions, the feelings, the sensations that come with it. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you're at that point where you, you get you where you're like, you're kind of past that. How I like to look at it is like when you're about to go up for a presentation and you're like fucking scared, you're, like you're mm -hmm. scared shitless. Right. Yeah. But then you get, you get normalized up there. Right. And you get like, you get used to it. Um, but you can either choose to continue to feel nervous, right? Mm -hmm. Or choose to feel like, I got this, you know? Exactly. Choose to stay mindful, choose to stay like, you know, doing the presentation. It's like, obviously, you know, that whole situation is a very much long, like it's mm -hmm. a way longer process, like the healing process for yeah. you get to get to that point exactly, like months, years, you know, like how yeah. long it takes you. But mm -hmm. once you get to that point, you can either decide to continue to stay in that like negative state or take it into a positive state. Yeah. And I think a great thing you said there is just, being able to share these life lessons if it, like if you don't share them they they do i don't like saying it but they actually do more harm you know what yeah, i mean because like definitely. think about think about the amount of people that you you might not help if you don't share that message mm -hmm. right and i'm sure there's there's a ton of people um or it, like i shouldn't say a ton of people but a lot of people with like in general specific negative events that happen in their life and they're scared to share it because of the judgment of others right they're yeah. scared to share it because of like the way um people might react to them mm -hmm. and I, I like and dude like i i appreciate like your courage your strength to like help um to the, vocalize this message yeah. and really just put it out there for others to see and like just just look at look at joe right now look at the man he is right like Giant. he's been he's been through so much right mm -hmm. he's been through things that men will never like mm -hmm. you know go through in their entire lives mm -hmm. right and it's just to, to come out looking like Joe, especially, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, but like to have the emotional maturity, to have all mm -hmm. this type of stuff is so important, right? And it's, and I think too, it's like you said, anybody can do it, right? Yeah, if definitely. someone, if someone in your spot at the end of the spectrum can bounce back like that, bro, mm -hmm. if someone with, I'm not trying to compare, right? But if, yeah, if, but yeah. if, if you were like, hypothetically, like if you're putting it on a scale of like, you know, nightmare to like, you know, peace, yeah. like. Like, pretty bad. like yeah you it's can all, but like, it's over there. like just looking at that like you if you can get through something like that if joe can get something mm -hmm. some through something like that you can definitely get through something that's you know not as uh bad as you know someone like passing away in your life yeah. it's like something terrible like that yeah and have you applied like that own i guess you could say philosophy to yourself like choosing your response to things right like choosing the meaning like have you yeah. ha like has that was that event in your life really what catapulted you into that kind of mindset, I, I guess think, you could say? Or I have think you it was always before been like that. that? Before I think, that, yeah. um, not to bring up my mom again, but no, 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 she's no. such oh, a big dude, part of my yeah, life yeah. that she's taught me so many things. And she's like, so nice. She's, yeah, the best. she's awesome. She's, the best. she's awesome, dude. But even before all this happened, it's not like yeah. it happened and I completely changed. Like we were talking yeah, about exactly. before, like yeah. I had all these morals before. Yep. Um, mostly from her. Um, but she always, um, she always was a big believer in, in choosing. You know, so we could, 
we, we could always choose our response to things. Yeah, like yeah. if someone, for example, like she would just teach little, like give nit little nuggets of wisdom yeah, yeah. forever. Like if someone like cut us off on the highway or something, I'd be like, you know, 16, like, ah, oh, what, what the hell? <laughs> like, and she'd be like, oh, maybe they're, maybe they're late to work. Maybe they're having mm. a bad day. Maybe yeah. they have other things on their mind. Yeah. Um, kind of just, um, attributing it, attributing it to the situation and not personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but she, she always had that. She was like devil's advocate mm -hmm. when like making choices like that. Like, yeah, we could look at it and take it negatively mm -hmm. or we could just, it's better for our own yeah. peace of mind. Yeah, if exactly. we, if we yeah. think positively from it, it's better mm -hmm. for the other person. It's better Absolutely. all around. Absolutely. Nothing's going to be positive out of just being like, ah, oh, this person <laughs> is a jerk or yeah, this person yeah, yeah. or, yeah. or this mm -hmm. thing happened to me because of this. Like yep. there's always a choice. Yeah. And definitely. I think you have that same mindset. Definitely. Um, I feel like we've talked about that before. There's, definitely. there's a choice to everything. Yeah, you know? no, there really is, man. And it's like, of course there's things outside of our control yeah. like that we can't mm -hmm. necessarily do, but, and it's like, why well, I have such a big fan of stoicism, man. And it's like, I know, I, I know I saw, I saw you like one of the, yeah. like, oh, yo, <laughs> I, I like, love yes, it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's like you have, I mean, like, bro, we can get to whether, like, not not now, but, like, whether the will is, you know, whether you have a will or not, whatever. All right, yeah. put that to the side. Let's just assume you have a free Next will. Time. All right, well, we'll, we'll say we'll have a free will. All right. Um, but, yeah, like, being able to realize that you, one of the few things we can do is control our response to things, right? And once you realize that, man, you, you realize that, and this is kind of cliche, but, like, you're a co-creator of your own reality. In, in simpler terms... Your perception of reality is created by you partially, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> if you choose things that are peaceful, right? If you make, and that's not a black and white matter, but like if you make choices that reciprocate peace in your life. So for instance, instead of going to the bar, you decide to stay home and meditate or read a book or, you know, watch a TV show or whatever, you know, like, yep. or go out to like some event um, that brings you a lot of happiness, right? Like you're choosing all these type of things, right? Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, you're true. Like when you're in those type of moments, when you're at the bar, right. And you, you got a loud crowd going on, you can like, you can either like get in like that party demon mode or yeah. like feeling like you're not getting enough tension. You can choose like what type of state of mind you're in. Yes. And it's like, dude, it really is like one of the few superpowers we have. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I just think like, you having that mindset, um, especially from your mom, like, mm -hmm. like was she like that when she was very like? Did she get that from her parents? Or I don't like, know. I yeah. think she she's just been through a lot, just yeah. like how okay, we yeah, have gotcha, as gotcha. a kid. Mm. Um, she had like her brother pass away, and just like things in her life yeah, that gotcha, gotcha. that kind of catapulted her into yeah. growing up quick mm. and thinking a certain way. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I think it stemmed a lot from that. Mm. Um. And just living with my dad was obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. hard. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah, God bless her yeah, yeah, for yeah. doing that yeah, for gotcha. that many years. Yeah, um, but um, yeah, so I think she she always had that mindset like us. Gotcha, but gotcha. Um, but yeah, yeah, and it's I find it like it's so important to like because my I say this all the time. My mom literally saved my life, dude. Like yeah. I don't I like yeah, you probably vice versa. Yeah, same. Yeah, I remember like dude, my my dad was it was I mean like. My dad took my mom to court probably like, and for custody reasons, right? Yeah. Probably like four or five times, yeah. right? And it was like, and he, this is by no means saying like he was like trying to like hunt me down or like, you know, kidnap me or anything. Yeah, no, yeah. but like, it was just like a continual thing. And it was like the message, would, like my mom would win every time, like flat out, you know, it was obvious. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember it was like one of the last times that he, like I actually saw him, he was like not, it was like we were living on like, like my old house, um, and he was knocking on my door, like trying to get, like tr not trying mm -hmm. to, like he wasn't breaking down the door, but like he was trying to get our yeah. attention, try and get in. And I just remember, I vaguely remember that night, and um, it was like the last time my mom and him had like a conversation about like me, be, like him, because I would go there on the weekends. Mm -hmm. He would like my mom would stay with my mom for like yeah. five days, right? Um, and my mom was like, "No, they're staying here this weekend," because like my dad was like. Oh, God, I don't know if he was drunk or whatever. He was just exactly. going through like yep. a situation that was just like not good. And my mom didn't feel comfortable, you know, really allowing me to uh, go with him. And, um, you know, like at this point, it was partial custody right before any of the court stuff. Um, and my mom was just like, no, they're staying here this weekend. Right. They're 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 not you're not going with them. And like she just pretty much like that was like the first time like she. She knew like it was gonna happen, but like she really put her foot down, and that was that's what really started the whole process of her getting full custody over me, and really not allowing me to be in that type of environment, right? Mm -hmm. And 
Dude, I can't tell. I don't know who I would be today. Like, yeah. I'd, probably, I'd probably be fucking... I don't know if I'd be fat, but, like, I would be wicked out of shape, probably yeah. addicted to alcohol, addicted yeah. to all these different type of drugs, being in a terrible state of mind, completely yeah. un- emotionally uh, immature, you know? It would be bad, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, like, if it wasn't for her, you know, and especially I think this reflects in your life mm-hmm. a lot, too, and this is something that's out of our control, right? Depends on the parents you have, right? Because if you have shitty parents, right, that raise yeah. you shitty, if you're not able to um, really be aware of the fact, like, when you grow up, right, mm-hmm. um, and you, like, reflect back on all that stuff, and you're like, I'm going to make the change, right, like, when you're older... Yeah. Which is incredibly hard to do it's because hard, you, know, yeah. you have all this conditioning that you have to overcome. Of course. Um, but yeah, if like you're most likely going to turn out shitty if you have really bad, like if you have a really bad childhood. Yeah. And I think, and you could probably touch on this a lot, like like just the impact parents have on their child. You know, like how important do you think that is? Like, do you, like because I, I think it's vital. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like it's crazy to think about because. Mm-hmm we got pretty lucky, you know what I mean? And, Definitely. like, obviously, like, Definitely. I know I know the situation happened, but, like, with, with your yeah, mom no. and my mom, yeah. you know, like, being able to pull us through, being mm-hmm. able to be that dad figure mm-hmm. in the life, you know, represent that other half, mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like we got pretty lucky, you Definitely. know, in ter- in that aspect. So, I mean, Definitely. would you consider it to be, like, a big part I think of, so. like... I think the same as you. I think it's yeah. absolutely vital. Um, and you look at, like, you know, my mom works with kids. I work with kids yeah. in the hospital and stuff, and sometimes they're... Like maybe if they had behavioral issues or something, it's not because they're just bad people. They weren't born yeah. this little child that <laughs> is evil. evil and, yeah, they're not born yeah, yeah. a demon. Yeah. It's not. That's not how it works. Yeah. You know, they're. It's their upbringing. It's not their mm. fault most of the yeah, time. Yeah. You know, it's it's whether their parents are around or. Um, and you don't have to like. Sometimes it's the very affluent families, and their yeah. parents are never around, mm. and the kids don't get any you know attention. Yeah, it's it's never for a reason. I try to help people telling people that that are like oh this or even people our age like they're like oh this kid's not a good kid or something like okay maybe that's true if you're looking at it objectively yeah yeah. they probably have a lot of things they're dealing with and went through as a kid or um and didn't get as lucky as us yeah you know they didn't have that person that could play both roles like our super moms yeah yeah dude um so yeah i try to again make that choice to Mm. think okay this person might not be that great of a person objectively but Mm. There's a reason, you know, yeah. it's not their fault. Yeah. And we, you know, yeah. again, making that choice, what, what can we do about it? You know, we have to do, yeah, you know, exactly. something. And I think it's like big thing that you touched on too, especially like with, I think you mentioned it earlier. Like, I think you were on the road, not like you're like, you would be on the road with your mom and like someone would cut you off and be like, instead of saying like, oh, that jackass, that motherfucker, you know, mm-hmm. like you yeah. like, you don't necessarily assume that that person is just a bad person. You know what I mean? There's probably things in their life that they're going through that causes them to maybe flip you off on the road, right? Yeah. To, like, you know, make a bad comment towards you, right? It's it's not about you. It's about what's going on in here, right? Exactly. And it's – and I think it's so important, and I'm sure – oh, dude, yeah. Like, this is this is a big thing I wanted to touch on with you. Yeah, like, definitely. I feel like – correct me if I'm wrong, which I don't think you would. No. But, like <laughs> – I mean, like, um, I just feel like you're such a non-judgmental person, meaning like you don't judge people. Like you're very yeah. accepting, right? You're mm-hmm. very approachable, right? Definitely. And like you're very welcoming, you know? And I think a lot of people when it comes to – and I think like when I was relating it back to the whole car thing, like when I think – when it comes to people that are maybe a little bit different, you know, maybe uh, not as – um, similar to you, not saying that they're like a bad person or anything. Like they're just yeah, they no, just have yeah. different interests, preferences, mm-hmm. whatever. Um, you you just understand that they're they're just coming from a different upbringing. You don't just Definitely. assume they're a weirdo. You don't just Definitely. assume they're a bad person. You know, you just assume like they're lame because they're different. Um, you're very accepting and willing to learn about them. You, know, you don't just like throw all these stereotypes on them, no, and no. it's just like fuck that guy. You know, yeah, like, yeah. no, no, exactly. No, yeah, you're right. And like, would you consider yourself to be a very like non-judgmental person that like doesn't yeah. really assume? about that yeah, yeah. definitely mm-hmm. just and in jet like for example if someone like people all the time pro- i don't know if you um experience this too some someone might say like oh did you see this person from high school like they gained weight or blah blah yeah, blah yeah. and i'm just like okay maybe that's true yeah 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 but maybe there's a reason yeah, it's exactly, not like exactly. um and even if there isn't it's you know it's not like there has to be a reason but i'm saying yeah. like maybe they're going through something tough maybe yeah. so i always try to think like that i'll yeah. never like you said, I, that's like the thing that I try to hold myself to the most is just like, yeah. 
not judging people. Yeah. So you know, big, people man. are so different. Big. People are, you know, if, if you're constantly judging people, you're just going to live a miserable mm. life because you could yeah. judge people all the time. You know, you yeah. could be judging me. Yeah. I look funny all the time. <laughs> wear crazy stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, and same. that's, yeah. So I think, um, uh, yeah, I try yeah. not to judge anyone. Yeah, no, I got you, you know? man. And I think I think a big thing of that too is like, I mean, I know my experience. Like, I'll just be like sitting somewhere, and then I, I'll just see like maybe I'll be like just seeing like one of my friends or something like that, and across like the dining hall or something like that. Immediately, like I'll have a judgment in my head, but mm-hmm. I'll be super conscious of it, right? Mm-hmm. And I'll just be like, I won't give in to that judgment, right? And I think that's just such an important thing, you know. When it's just like because I I think when like we're just such individuals that are conditioned to naturally judge people definitely. and maybe like i'm not trying to speak for you but um oh, like we just naturally make judgments about people right comments like in our head and our thoughts yeah. um but we're but a lot of times people just give into that right and they're, yeah. they're not conscious of it right because if you're able to stay conscious of it you won't that won't dictate your response and the way you act right because yeah. thoughts 100%. drive drive your behaviors right 100%. or drive the, your actions i should say mm-hmm. and then your behaviors um but it's just such a vital thing because it really does all start in here, man. Yeah. It really does. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think you're such a great person. You know what I mean? Because like you're able to be so cognizant of and conscious of what the fuck is going on in here, mm-hmm. right? And therefore, it doesn't unleash out there. Yeah, and, exactly. And I think you made a great yeah, point yeah. just going off that. Like, yeah. it's not like I don't notice these things. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. You yep, know, yeah, like yeah, exactly yeah, what you definitely. said. Like, someone... I don't know. Their hair looks funny one day. It's not like I'm like thinking in my head like, oh, I'm blind to that. Like, (laughs) that's not true. Yeah, I do. But it like you said, it's it's Mm. making that choice again. Mm. We're talking about choices today. Just making that choice like it, it, you know, it it might be for, you know, whatever it is. And not not. But like like you said, life is all about judgments. Yeah. If we didn't judge anything, we would. We wouldn't be able to live yeah, like exactly, that. That's exactly, what yeah, drives yeah. life. Yep, yep, making judgments, making, yeah. and that's what make you know judgments are our choices too. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm not blind to that. Yeah, you know, that's course, not what I was trying course. to say, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. But you brought it up perfectly, yeah, saying that that you have that that option to, mm. you know, say it to someone and say, oh, this yeah, person's, yeah. Mm-hmm. you know, and, and gossip and do yeah, all this yeah. stuff. I'm like mm-hmm. the when people gossip to me, I hate it. I'm not a, you know, <sighs> yeah, I, I'm not a big. It's so it's, superficial. It's so, yeah. That's a whole nother topic. Yeah. But just, it kind of relates to that. Um, definitely, definitely. Because if you don't make that judgment to just suppress it or whatever, you could yeah. easily just say, oh, did you see this person today? Did you see what they're wearing? Do you see this or yeah. that? Mm-hmm. And there's no need for that. Yeah, yeah. You know? And, yeah, man, it's so true. There, there really is no need for it, right? Like, it's it's called gossip for a reason. Yeah. Like, it's pointless. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Like, and, like, a big thing, too, it's like, when you walk into a room, right, mm-hmm. and like you walk into your bedroom, right, and you see everything that's normally on the wall, right, mm-hmm. but then that one little thing is out of place, right, it catches your attention, right, Definitely. and that's just like gossip. It yeah. catches your attention, yeah. and it's interesting, right, and that's what, and we can kind of transition into this, like so many people outside, I'm like, I'd like to get into more of this, because I, I know you, but I don't know you know you, you know, yeah, like, it's so, yeah, other. for sure, dude, and it's like, a lot of people, they just walk outside, right, yeah. and... It's like, oh, there's nothing to do in Connecticut. Like, this place sucks. Like, because they're just so used to everything, right? Yeah. They don't enter the boring. They don't enter, like, yeah. what, what's already all around them, right? What they're mm-hmm. already used to, right? Mm-hmm. And I just think, like, when you're able to just stay in the boredom, right? I guess you could say stay in, like, the state that's not attention-grabbing. Mm-hmm. Stay in the state that's, like, not really interesting, I guess you could say, mm-hmm. Right? you'll receive a lot better effects on your life, right? And so whether it be going outside, right, into nature or just anything like that, just sitting with the birds, sitting with the yeah. trees, dude. Like, that's how – and I once again, like, I'm just going on a little tangent here. No, why I not, love it. Dude? I love why it. Why not? Like, I love your tangent. Yeah, dude. Like, I found my authentic self out in nature, right? Yep. I was extremely inauthentic in high school, right? I mean, to be fair, like, we were, we're like, we're, yeah. we're growing up. Are, we're just yeah. finding our place, you know? But I just remember, it, like, I was actually sitting on the mid – this is, like, when I claim I had my, like – I call it the spiritual awakening, right? Yeah. Um, I more formally, it's like a shift in awareness, right? Yep. I realized that I wasn't my thoughts, mm-hmm. right? I was sitting on the mid-campus parking garage when mm-hmm. I was when I was in art when Jake and I were on the same staff, yeah. um, and I just remember, like, I, I conceptually knew all this type of spiritual knowledge, but it wasn't yeah. applied, right? Mm-hmm. And so I was sitting on the mid-campus parking garage meditating, right? Sun beaming down mm-hmm. on me, and I just remember being able to listen to the birds mm-hmm. while being able to be aware that I was a 
aware that I wasn't listening to the birds, right? Yeah. So like I wasn't I wasn't attached to my thoughts anymore. I was just kind of this like in this like kind of neutral awareness state, but yeah. I was I was aware that I was aware of listening to the birds, yes. right? Yeah. And so that for me catapulted me into like being able to enter this boredom type of state, right? Yeah. Being able to enter this type of state that's not interesting. And so I think <laughs> I know that was a big side tangent, but no, <gasps> the reason why I said that was do you feel like when this comes to things about judgment, when it comes to things about gossip, when it comes to things that because I feel like you're very much an individual that doesn't go with the crowd, right? Doesn't yeah. go with that herd mentality, like, oh, we're going know. out. Like, and of course, like, we, we both go out on Thursday nights yeah. here and there, right? Yeah. But, like, we don't drink. We don't smoke, right? No, like, yeah. you're very much a different individual, Joe. Like, that's mm -hmm. just objectively, that's how it is, you know? Yep. And do you think, like, you've just been able to enter um, different types of states, like, different types of states that aren't, like, in alignment with, like, the crowd, mentality i know i said that in a really like bad no no way. no i, yeah, I got like, you i i think sometimes i like doing it like it, it's me and who i am yeah, definitely, definitely. and i don't like get embarrassed by being who i am which some people might of course um but i almost like being that person that like like if you see me walking around campus for example sometimes i look nuts like i'll have like I don't even know. I'll have a bandana <laughs> on. Dude, I love I'll it. Have, I like, love it, bro. I'll just look crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Dude, I love it when you And I, I used to say, like, if I'm not wearing one thing a day that people are like, what the hell is this guy yeah, doing? Yeah, yeah. That I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> but I think I like it because, like, if, if people want to be themselves, mm. I could kind of be, not that I'm, like, this um, role model, but, course, like, um, you know, if they see someone else like being a themselves. Yeah, yeah. if they see someone else being themselves with a bandana and looking a little yeah, yeah. they're not going to be quick to judge they're going to say oh joe is just doing, doing that crazy yeah, stuff and him. um so if they see someone else doing that you know they might be less quick to judge in that aspect yeah um same thing going out um not drinking and stuff you know we yeah. still have a good time we dance course, around course, um and if we could be that like role model not that always people are always looking at course, us but someone might have that thought like oh you know, maybe I don't have to drink that much tonight because, yep, yep. you know, Joe and Cal are over there dancing yeah. up a storm <laughs> yeah, still. Having a great time. Having a great time. Yeah, exactly. um, so if, if we could be like that that person, sometimes I, I, I really enjoy mm. doing that. Like yeah. being that like just nonconformist that sometimes looks crazy. Sometimes yep, yep. is like the one that people are like, you know, why is he not drinking? Why is he wearing this? Why mm. is he this, that, and the <laughs> other? Um and it's good. It's good to break stereotypes too. Sure. Yeah, um, like I have, I got tattoos. Sometimes I wear like my, my earrings and stuff. Oh, that's um, bad, dude. And, that's awesome. and older people, a lot of times older people are quick yeah, to yeah. judge. Yep, yep. Um, but it's great when I could like, you know, I'm just like my genuine self. And then they're like, oh, this, you know, yep. and they get by that, you know, they see, oh, Joe's got the tattoos and he's got this yeah, stupid dude. dangly cross here I love him, man. I love but he's it. still like this nice guy yeah definitely. i like like breaking stereotypes yeah, like that do. i think that's one of the best things you could do is shatter a stereotype mm. like i love that too because like when you're like nobody's you right like mm. there's not there's not gonna be another copy of you right like maybe you got a twin but like personality wise and corporate there's not gonna be another you and like i love what you said there because you're not afraid to be yourself, right? Like when I saw, I, I know, like when you wore that bandana to our flag football game. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah dude, the other like, day I, I wore like, it. Like, like I wasn't like, oh my god, Joe's wearing a bandana. Like, get this guy the fuck off the field. <laughs> like, no, no, no. Like, I was like, oh, I was like, oh, yo, that's fucking dope, dude. Yeah. Like, I love it. Like, mm -hmm. it's so cool. And it, it's like exactly what you said. It's not that we're trying to get people to be like us, right? It's just we're like in general, we're just, and we're not even trying, right? We're no. just we're just indirectly being ourselves, right? And then people might look at that and have a thought like. Dude, I don't have to be sleeping around with all these girls. I don't have to fit into this stereotype, exactly. right? I, like, yeah, I don't have to. I don't have to fit into this stereotype. I can just do me, right? And I don't have to, whether it be the social pressure, whether it be this conformity pressure, I don't have to worry about that, right? Because ultimately, at the end of the day, it's a choice to be authentic, right? And I'm not saying we should be authentic in every situation, right? No, because that would probably not. get us in a lot of trouble, right? Definitely. But definitely. I'm saying the more authentic, I think, the more authentic you can be, right? Mm -hmm. The happier life the more happy of a life you're gonna have yeah. right and have you felt that in your own life like yeah allowing, i think so yeah and i think what you said like it could get you in trouble like <laughs> yeah, i'm not yeah. gonna wear like my earrings <laughs> and stuff to an interview and a bandana exactly, exactly. Yeah, but like yeah. if it's the right the, excuse me the, the right place. time in the right place yep. yeah then why not there's no there's no reason why not definitely, definitely. um 
Yeah, I, I love doing that sometimes. Yeah. Just, it, just, yeah. Is it like it? it yeah, you're like I can just tell like the vibe mm-hmm. you're giving off. Like it just it doesn't feel like so freeing. Like does it feel yeah. like? Because I don't know. I feel like I don't know. I feel like it when feels you're good. Like yeah. when you're when you're able to beat yourself, you're just like that eagle flapping its wings. Mm-hmm. You know, flying for miles. You know, there's nothing yeah. stopping you. Um, and it's just I don't know. I feel like being authentic is like people are like, how the hell you be authentic, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's just the reason like. <laughs> And this is one of my favorite like quotes that I ever came up with. Yeah. I'm like, I think I was, and I, I put this on one of my Instagram uh, captions a while ago. I said, the authentic self needs no identity because it comes naturally. Right. Yeah. And it's and in and, and, and short, that essentially means like, you don't need to think to be all natural. You don't need to like draw up this playbook of like nope. how you're going to be natural, right. Or be authentic. Right. Mm-hmm. It just comes naturally, right? You're not yep. even thinking about being authentic. You're just authentic. You're who you yeah. are, right? Yeah. And I think that's when, for a lot of people, they just feel so peaceful, right? They just feel so in alignment with their self and where a lot of their purpose comes in, right? Yeah. And it's not to say that they're always happy. They're always, like, peaceful, right? But they're able to get through those hard times and ups and downs, right? They kind of just keep this even keel, right? Mm-hmm. They'll experience both. And I don't know. Have you experienced that in your own life? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. And I think – um I think you're totally right. It's just, and I think like sometimes it might not come so naturally at first. Like you need to, like if you're walking through the dining hall and you're wearing something that's, you know, you, but not what other people think is, is normal. You, it's embarrassing. Sometimes you're like, people are looking at me. I look, um, but it's when you do it enough, it's just like you said, it's natural. It's, it's, it's people are like, Oh, that's Joe. He's going to look crazy sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Or, Oh, that's mm-hmm. this person. They wear this or do this with uh-huh. their hair. Or, yeah, yeah. Um, whatever the case may be, or yeah. act this way. Mm-hmm. As long as it's not like, mm-hmm. you know, disrespect, you know, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I think yeah. if you do it enough, mm. then it's like you, you get past that. Yeah. Like, Oh, this is embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you're just like, all right, this is myself. Yeah. And other people think that too. At first mm-hmm. they're like, Oh, maybe, you know, that's kind of embarrassing. Like, that's cringy. And then they're like, oh, that's just that person. Yeah, this is Joe. And, and, and like, kind of getting back, okay, like, kind of transitioning, yeah. um, getting into, like, your daily habits, right? Because I feel like that's a big part of how you maintain who you are, right? And maintain this kind of positive state. So, like, what are some things? And, like, this, I genuinely don't know. Like, mm-hmm. I I'm, I know, like, roughly, and I have, like, a general yep. idea. But, like, what are some things that you do every single day or, like, every other day or every week, whatever? Mm-hmm. Um that allow you to stay in this kind of like even keel state state yep. that we're kind of talking about, like in being authentic is one of them. Right? Yeah. So I think could be the, like, I plan my day yeah. like the day before um, I, I plan out my whole day. Like I can't sleep unless I have oh, really like my whole day planned out, oh, wow. whether it goes to each minute or not, you know, whether it goes to plan or not is one thing. And I don't mind if it doesn't, but just going to sleep, knowing that I have, everything planned and I have enough time to do me and Jason were talking about this the other day that I have enough time to do things and and get it all done. You know, that, that gives me like a peace of mind. Um, if not, I'm just like stressed during the day. Um, and I'm not, I'm just not myself. Um, so that's one thing, but, um, like we talk about working out, um, going for a run, being outside, um, yoga, yoga, exactly doing yoga. Um, and I'm just a big proponent of being outside. Like you said, like getting that, that sun in your face, like Dude, in the yeah. morning, mm-hmm. I've been oh, running a lot in the morning and I oh, feel like yeah? that just like grounds my day. It's great. Um, oh. just like, I think what helps me a lot is getting up. Not that you have to, I used to get up, like we were, t- we used to talk like, you know, four, four thirty in the morning <laughs> yeah, and like, work out and do all this stuff yeah, and get yeah. everything done. But I just wasn't getting enough sleep and stuff. Exactly. Um, but now I just allow myself to get up a little bit earlier than when I have to do something. Like if I have yoga at eight, Mm. it's miserable. If I have to get up at seven 30 and roll out of bed and then go to yoga, I have, I don't enjoy it. But if I get up just 45 minutes earlier, Mm. so I have time to just, whether it's take a deep breath, go for a light jog or a walk, Mm. um, get some breakfast or or journal or Mm -hmm. meditate or anything, then it makes it so much more enjoyable. Cause I'm not like, like one, it's because I'm just tired. I just yeah. got out of bed. Yeah. Um, so it allows me time to wake up, mm. but it just allows time to like ground me and I don't feel as like yeah. stressed. Uh, so that's something that really helps me like stay very like even keel, like you said. Yeah, yeah. Dang. Yeah, man. And it's just because I've even experienced this too. Like when, like when you don't give yourself that, like, because the most important time of the day really is that beginning part of the day. Cause like your brain's waking up, you know, you're, 
your perception starting to form, right? Like all mm-hmm. these thoughts, right? Um, coming in. And it's like, if you can, if you can have like a daily practice that like, I was even thinking about this today. Cause like I, I, I get up at like six 45 and then I go to work like 30 minutes later at rec. Right. It's not always the easiest, right? <laughs> but like no. I, I give myself a shower in the morning and it's not, it's not good. And this is what I'm getting to. Like I do that four days a week. And so I got up this morning and I took a shower. I was getting ready to like go get breakfast. And I was like, I, I the, the thought in my mind didn't even think about, or not even a thought in my mind came across of just meditating for like 10 minutes. Right. I was like, Whoa, whoa, right? Because, like, and we always think we got to go, 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 mm-hmm. you know? And it's taking us, taking that step back to whether go on a run, right, in the morning yep. to like meditate, journal, you know, just for like 10 minutes. That's what I did today. I just like, I was like, okay, Cal, 10 minutes, you know? Yeah, like, your mind's, minutes. your mind's telling you to go. Got to be for a little bit, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, it's so important because it really just does set that foundation for how the re- not not saying like, you're, you have no ability to improve your day after that, but it's going to greatly, I feel, enhance your ability to improve, like to have a good yeah. day and be able to improve that day through your response and things. Yeah. And I think um, in addition to that, like when you, when, so when you go, when you wake up in the morning, when you, um, when you kind of like, you know, just get your day started, do you find that, you know, running and yeah, you said, yeah, you said it, it very much does ground you. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, have you felt that it's helped you like when you're going through the, when you, when you have that practice mm-hmm. in the morning, whatever it be. Um, and then you faced hard times throughout your day. Have you found that it's helped you stay in like an even, not always in an even keel state, but respond to it in like a positive and proactive manner? Yeah, like, yeah, I think so. And I think, um, especially like a hard activity, like running and yeah. stuff, you you kind of have that mentality like oh I got through that in the morning. Yeah, you're not yeah. consciously thinking when you go through something hard at 4 p.m. like <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. I I had a hard run this morning. Yeah, this yeah. is gonna be a piece of cake. Yeah, yeah. But it's kind of like um, subconsciously where you're like, you know, like it just you you you've accomplished something that mm. day, and that that sometimes goes a long way. And I like how you said it doesn't have to be like a 10 mile run. It doesn't have to be <laughs> an hour meditation. Yeah, yeah. You could do a five minute meditation, a 10 minute meditation. Mm. You could just go for a walk. Like if Mm. you're walking to class, maybe leave 10 minutes early and take it, take the long way. Yeah. Um, Yeah, True. So true. It doesn't have to be like some people think, oh, you got to get up at four 30 and Mm. work out and grind. And sometimes it's just that five minutes where we just take to ourselves, meditate, whatever Mm. it is that make all the difference. You know, it does, man. It really does. And I think, um, I think to wrap up this episode, I think I think we're getting to a good point where we can. Unless you did, we, did you want to say anything else, man? Like, no, I mean, whatever you want, I'm good. Dude, with no, no, dude, and I, I just think like you're just. We'll talk again. Yo, for, oh, you, oh, dude, Joe's definitely gonna be on the podcast again, one thousand percent, dude. I'm back. Um, yeah, and we could definitely get into more of like your your habits and your behaviors yep, and like your daily things. But I think just touching on that, like, you're you're clearly like, man, who you are is definitely part in part due to your habits, right? Mm -hmm. And I think we're not just talking about physical habits, right? Like external habits. You're talking about internal habits too. The way you think, right? The way you perceive situations, the way you interpret things, because that is that is the root of how your external habits go, right? And of course, like like we said before, um your habits are very much influenced by how you were parented when you were young, right? Mm -hmm. So there there is that factor, of course, not denying that. But I think if you are able to develop habits and behaviors that allow you to authentically flourish throughout your daily life right Mm -hmm. so whether that be you know just meditating whether that be just you know being yourself and not conforming to you know social pressure your friends whatever you know making decisions for yourself Mm -hmm. and really just allowing yourself to be joe right Mm -hmm. to be you right to just be a positive individual that you can choose to be i think you can really impact your life in a great way and you can help others yeah in the same time definitely and to wrap up just like we were saying before, like with judging people mm. and, and judgment and stuff, um, like take it from my story personally. Yeah, like you never, absolutely. you never know what someone's been through. You know, I never even knew that about you. Yeah, yeah. We never talked about yeah. it. Um, so some people will always say like, oh, you're just like that, like cookie cutter, you know, yeah, you came from like a yeah, white exactly. affluent yeah. family. I'm yeah. like, I kind of came from the gutter, man. Yeah, like, dude. honestly, yeah, like people, people know, have man. it so much worse than me. Yeah. Like, oh, course, I am course. absolutely blessed. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. But I think some people will have that preconceived notion like, oh, this person's happy all the time. Mm. They must have, they must have it all. You know, they must have two great parents and come from a wealthy family. And it's just not like that as we know. Um, So I think just to take away from this podcast is, um, 
and what we will be more mindful of in yeah, the future and stuff. Just um, yeah. and which we do in the, on the daily, but just even putting more thought into it. Just um, you know, being mindful that people go yeah. through different things. Yep. You know, Absolutely, and it, it it may be this like great thing like in our lives where we turn it into something great, yeah. or it may be something bad and we need to help someone out a little bit. Dude. Um, so I think that's important for Dude, us to remember. Absolutely, man. I think Joe said it beautifully there, you know, just don't assume what other people are going through. You know, you really never know, right? You never, like, you don't know, you know, you like, even if they tell you, there's still something there that's like Definitely. brewing, you know, and it's probably dictating their life. So it's like, you know, just look at people as a blank slate and don't, 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 assume but don't throw the stereotype on them right i'm sure you might have some inclinations and ideas but just you know get to know them right get yeah. to know them and just really you know like like we said before you control your response to things you're you're a co-creator of your own reality and uh you know you can really yeah. you can really make a difference um just by taking events in your life no matter how small or how big and use it as a life lesson that you can help others with so Definitely. you know with all that being said guys um make sure you guys like comment and subscribe on this youtube channel um on this youtube video um this has been episode number 65 of the conscious 66. cast oh fuck dude okay oh i fucked it up oh. all right. fuck all right all right we're like me the other day <laughs> All right, guys, so this has been episode number 66 of the Conscious Cast. I'm your host, Cal, along with my other boy, Mr. Joe Iacovelli. He's not going to damn me. <laughs> my man. Where can they find you, my man? Instagram. Instagram right? I don't really post that much. Yeah. Instagram, hey, Iacovelli you want to, Joe. Yeah, yeah. If you want to hit him up there, um, I'm sure he'll love to respond to you. I think that's it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and, uh, Joe. Yeah, guys, make sure you love yourself because I love you. Stay handsome, and we are clocking out, people. Peace.